contribution as a part of the faculty development program 22. This session is indeed a unique one as we delve into the rich heritage of Indian wisdom. Thank you, Shashi Kumar, to this gathering. So, welcome you to this gathering. Uh, over to you, sir. Sir, we are all here. Over to you. Namaskaram. Namaskaram and thank you. These reflections, reactions, interaction. I keep doing it. Today morning only, I had a session in uh, Delhi, the Malavia University under the University Grants Commission on a teacher's training program on the mind management techniques. I must thank uh, uh, the organizers, especially my uh, friend and ex-colleague. We worked together in the Calicut University as I was director and uh, Dr. Professor Chako was the reader there then. And uh, I must thank Sandeep and uh, Dr. Lipson for making it happen, I'm sure. And the topic was also suggested by Dr. Chako. He wanted me to speak on um, from Vedas to the world. Uh, Veda itself means the knowledge. It is not earth we are speaking. We are speaking about the world. World has got a uh, higher meaning. What we add to the nature, earth, all that toponyms, including the names of places when we add, they are all knowledge. That becomes the world. The pure, beautiful live earth is entirely different from what we call by the world. World means economics, world means culture, world means people, world means the politics, everything. So what is that Vedas can give to the world, from Vedas to the world? Beautiful topic. When Professor Chako suggested this, I said fine. That is because I thought I can look at it and reflect on something which comes in my mind and the second uh, uh, like a subtitle what is given is internationalizing indian higher education this is a time when most of the indians travel outside india for the higher education and probably it's a paradox that we are discussing on internationalizing indian higher education and that through the ancient wisdom so the question is, do we have something to provide to the whole humanity from India, which probably is not there in the other part of the world? Yes, I do believe we have. And that may not be acceptable to most of the people who are looking for the materialistic, the technological, advancement which people believe that that is development that is progress i'm using words very carefully and my intention is not to establish india is a great nation or to establish indian heritage or the scientific heritage of india is great no that's not my intention at all but what we should realize is if we are talking about what vedas could give that means once upon a time long long back when the whole world had not much of knowledge it is not what we call it as 10,000 years 5,000 years the dating and the timing is one scale which is generated by probably the western thinkers and they wanted to put some number and most of the Vedic knowledge is uh, much beyond much prior to what the literature talks about it's not 10,000 years because we believe that we are in Kali Yuga I using the word very carefully we believe that we are in Kali Yuga and before that we had Treta Yuga the first Treta Yuga then uh, you know we had much before that the Satya Yuga and just before uh, Kali Yuga we had Dwabha Yuga each Yuga is for like 32,000 years multiplied by 2, multiplied by 3, multiplied by 4, added together becomes a Mahayuga. And that becomes half the date of a Brahma's date time. And then 
you multiply that with uh, 120 multiplied by 365, it becomes the whole one uh, Manuntara. And in every day ritual which we have in temples, it says, that is how they chant. That means so many Manuntaras are over. And we are in the probably one of the Manuntaras. That means if you add all that together, we get a number called 198 crores of years or something like that. The modern science also says the earth is that much old. So we are talking about some knowledge system. That is what is Indian knowledge system. I remember the first meetings of Indian knowledge system which happened in Kerala, in Cochin. I was invited from Hyderabad to speak on this topic. That Vedic knowledge, we dated by 10,000 years or so. Nothing wrong. And that is the Vedic wisdom we are talking about. And what is the global framework today? Um, including the new education policy, probably under which we wanted all this to happen. The other day, I had a radio uh, interview from Delhi asking how do you justify what is being taught in Indian Institute of Technologies, IITs, about the consciousness? Why do you want them to uh, teach that? That is one question which asked and that interview is I posted on to YouTube. I believe that it is not what we learn is directly useful in this 21st century education, which NEP says, which I don't agree generally, because I'm basically a mathematician. When the numbers comes, the century, the word comes, I Cody, look at that, the code word century is 100 years. So 21st century means we are talking about an education which is 100 years. I don't agree because we should not talk about 100 years of education. We should talk about education that moves in the recent past, probably 10 years is the right time. One decade is the right time. So I call, we are in a world where education or the technology or the development or the progress, whatever you want to call, that is too fast. What we have seen five years back is not what we have seen now. I remember when I was working with uh, Professor Chaco in the Calicut University, the first program what I did was I went to uh, Delhi to attend a program on an MIT program, the Science Institute of Technology, which gave, which is called Adaptive Learning. I authored a book also along with one of the education experts in Calicut University on that topic. And that book is Adaptive Learning. How do you get adapted to the today's situation, what we need and how a teacher can get adapted to the students how the education system has to become. So it talks about the styles, methodologies, knowledge principles, etc, etc in that book. Recently, I rewrote that book or added a few more points in that book and wrote that book as a new addition. And that book talks about the third decade of 21st century. I repeat, third decade of 21st century. Why do I call it as third decade of 21st century. We are living in the third decade. We should not talk about education which happens in centuries. We should talk what happens in the immediate past. And all my books recently written, the teaching in the third decade of 21st century, life in the 3 to 1 world, and the elemented education in the 3 to 1 world. All, most of the books. I have written nearly 20 books during the COVID time. That was the time when I had less of movement and travel. I thought I should write all these books. These are all related to education and how education should become part of the knowledge. Luckily or uh, thankfully, 2015 onwards, the United Nations SDG came into plan, Sustainable Development Goals. I started reading it very thoroughly, probably hundreds of lectures all throughout the world on SDG because it's a United Nations program, including Philippines, UK, Nigeria, most of the places I gave lectures. Having little bit based on the Vedic wisdom of India, I started looking at what is that the sustainable development goals are being propagated. I found most of them were there like everybody needs to get educated. It is not faith system which should run. 
logic reasoning has to be there we must make people to become sustainable you can see each of these slogans which are used by united nations already available in our sanatana dharma therefore i authored a book called sanatana dharma goals sdg itself i recall it as sata sanatana dharma goals sanatana is nitya nutana and chira puratana and i wrote 108 bharatiya um, sanatana dharma goals that is because we find that we in india have given lot of importance to education our wisdom what we call it as maybe bhagavad gita is the most popular indian sanatana dharma expressions and in which i found that it is not at the end of the bhagavad gita krishna doesn't tell you listen to me i am telling you it was not a commandment it was not blindly to be followed that is where the wisdom of indian education remains that is the topic which we are talk- discussing today what is that indian education like even you consider it's an avatar it's a god he will talk to people his son student a master talks to a student doesn't tell that you should just believe it it says yatheshchati tatakuru you wisely think about it which is acceptable to you you think it is good for you make it applicable so i found our today's education system doesn't allow people to think much it is not <coughs> making somebody highly creative if you look at the system of <coughs> godhood and uh, goddess <coughs> we find that in india we had the goddess of education who is saraswati and her husband happened to be brahma the job of brahma is creativity and saraswati is the goddess of education and we believe <coughs> these two people together only can make education more fundamental that means research has to be part of education system these are the principal values which india had in education so i rewrote the bhagavad gita concepts if you look at it it is more like arjuna's question if somebody asked me who authored bhagavad gita i don't call it is vyasa or ganesha who wrote it is are all mythological it is not from the master it is from the students question the answers came you can see arjuna asked a lot of questions connecting to what is being taught immediately asked the question and the answer came if you look at vedas vedas are not that popular much popular is upanishads upanishads are always questions and answers so what is the vedic wisdom in internationalizing education which india can contribute it is interaction between the master and the student so i wrote bhagavad gita in the modern style which is called the gita way in which the student is asking lot of questions to the master and the answer is being given all these are the problems which a student who is a student in america who is now working have a practical world problem day to day affair what happens around them are written down as questions and i could find out answers for most of the questions from bhagavad gita and i authored the book so i am sure that is where the vedic wisdom the relevance of the modern in the modern context what we can contribute to the world it is not the technology development it is not the science for the technology purpose it is not the engineering part of it 
what we can give is more philosophical that is why bhagwan krishna has talked about his weapon is not any weapon which is a physical weapon it is sudarshana darshana is philosophy sudarshana is good philosophy so what we have given to the world probably why india is being recorded as the wealth of knowledge which is everlasting because technology can change but wisdom and philosophy can never change the global partnership and collaboration of indian education system if at all we have got an exchange program student mobility programs the curriculum integration the vedic knowledge which could contribute towards the philosophical psychological lifestyle development of the five fold i call it as physical emotional intellectual social spiritual these five fold development we could give it from the indian perspective how and what is that preserving the authority of india in balancing the modernization with the traditional knowledge is whatever we had as shastra science is not shastra that is why natya shastra becomes music becomes a shastra psychology becomes a shastra all the shastra translation could be wrong that is why we don't have another word to use that shastra by definition by uh, um, nagarjuna says लोकानाम उपकाराया एतत् सर्वं प्रदर्शितम् साक्षात् अनुभवे दृष्टो न श्रुतो न गुरु दर्शिदाः व्हाटएवर मास्टर सेज इज नॉट व्हाट इज शास्त्र युक्ति युक्त उपादेयम् वचनम् बालकादपि अन्यत्र नमवत्यज्यम् अप्युक्तम् ब्रह्मकादपि व्हाट इज लॉजिकली टू बी एनालाइज्ड एंड यू फाइंड दैट इज यूजफुल फॉर यू द पीपल अराउंड यू व्हिच इज टू बी प्रिजर्वड दैट इज बाय सनातन nitya nutana ever ready applicable and the chirapuratana the oldest of the oldest impactful throughout the world that is what is the knowledge system what probably india can contribute and what probably should happen is look at the psychological part which is explained need not go to vedas look at the itihasa puranas that is why the modern management concepts from the bhagavad gita the psychological aspect in the yoga va system in the ramayana I I quote. I am also a psychotherapist. So most of my lectures on the mind management today morning, also and yesterday two days I had session in which I was talking to the teachers from Kashmir to Kanyakumari. We had participants, nearly two hundred of them, and I was talking to them. Purne manasi sampurnam jagat sarvam sudhadravaihi upaane guda padasya nirichar master daiva bhuvu. There is no better psychology book than what is in the yoga vas system. No modern psychology, including the Descartes, cannot. say that what in the ramayana is totally wrong therefore the impact on the students faculty institutions the learning process the success stories the case studies all these need to be reestablished therefore the civilized past what the dignity of india what is written in the sanskrit literature today being uh, spread throughout the world in english with a lot of translations probably could be misled we have now uh, during the covid what i did was i happened to be the chairman for one of the committees on the early childhood education and also i am also the chancellor for the national education network which is run from calcutta i wrote a book which as part of the nep which says it's a informal education what i did was i i keep um, looking at how our grandmothers or the traditional education system you can see the guru sits and the students are surrounded by him and that is how the learning happens but today's the classroom arrangement itself is totally wrong you can see the students are sitting probably the nursery lkg ukg the new education policy said nursery also have to be formal but up to 7th class it, the education has to be informal but i don't know how it is going to be i am sure it's not going to get implemented unfortunately the chairman of isro when i joined kasturi can happen to be the chairman for this committee also i worked with him in the headquarters during the time and i found that 
what is being written is what is being copied from a small place in the northern hemisphere and we believe that that's a great knowledge which india has to implement it's so pathetic the length and breadth of india is too large the sun there ends or maybe stays for 200 days and it's a small island in which it's a different geographical situation and we wanted that system to come in india and it has become a fashion most of the teachers go there for seeing what is happening there and some of them come here to see how it doesn't happen in india also i rewrote the education system in the nursery lkg ukg starting from the birth time because we believe the ayurveda as a medical science have got something great to provide to the uh, delivery time onwards so i have written a book called parenting with ayurveda nurturing life holistically starting from the pregnancy time i happen to be a family which is very close to ayurveda uh, discipline and i found that we have lot of things to contribute it is not the yoga for pregnant women which happens one month it is a holistic treatment of taking care from the conception from the marriage from the time uh, the conceiving happens up to the age where we wanted to grow and then from the age 3 to grade 3 i wrote one book it's not a one book for handling purpose i made it into four books and here the book and the concept and the title is the grandma child care shiksha gurugram i believe that it's like a grandmother teaching a young child education should become a very holistic very informal like the grandparent teaching the young children which is not happening but that was what happened in the traditional indian education system it was totally informal so i believe and what i did was documented the whole thing into a to z of education so you can see the ambitious beginning a b c d that these are all chapter headings h i j k l m n o p q r t u v w x y z up to a to z of education i wrote a book which is exactly what is the traditional indian system and we can make the psychological aspect taking care of the children from the young childhood so though the title is the um, the adult education or the higher education the problem today which most of the people face from the teenage to the adolescents to the youth to the elderly people you can see lot of celebrities who are rich who are highly educated committing suicide they are all with a lot of problems in their health if you look at the happiness index of india it is much low imagine what is that india is providing to the world which is under the court of yoga where in which we are not able to make our own people happy and we claim that we can give lot of things to the world it looks like again another big uh, uh, conflict and contradiction this is what i thought i must start working into the uh, psychological aspect of the adolescents this is navigating the adolescents towards a better learning because we have got lot of conflict one of the biggest conflict is we are not able to learn the way we are supposed to learn in for last 3 months probably i must have counseled a lot of people nearly 1500 students on call and few of them i recorded and posted to my youtube you can look at it and most of them have confusion on engineering which subject is to be taken electronics electrical mechanical civil computer science robotics they have no idea see we have a education system in which after 10th we send them to 11th and 12th unfortunately in kerala most of the people repeat it and it has become a big disease in kerala and they are not able to decide what they want uh, what they want where they wanted to study what for they are studying the objective and scope is not written well every education in the abroad any university will ask for an sop statement of purpose why are you studying this course what for you are studying where are you studying why do you want to study in this program in this college we don't because we we just join the course where we really don't want to join that is because we have not tuned our education and we need we had a system in which the vedic knowledge system 
every student wanted to go and learn and stay with the masters they are all mentors you can see the bhagavan krishna himself traveled multiple states and then went to the guru in which one of the richest person probably from the palace along with the poorest of the poor kuchela was his classmate today we have an education system in which the rich studies in one and poor studies in the other one we have moved from the indian education system totally into what is called cbse you can imagine a nursery lkg teacher also says my class is cbse the other day i was talking to the teachers in the national education forum and in which one of the teachers said how do i complete my syllabus asked which class you are teaching and she says she is a teacher in lkg a lkg teacher is worried about how syllabus can be completed you can imagine we are talking about the new education policy in which we don't know this is how a compressed forced tensed stressed system of education which we have so what we wanted to do probably the vedic wisdom is not what we can contribute to the west not what we can contribute internationally if we can make our children fit for fortunately indian people do excellent but that is only probably 0.02 percentage of the indian students that is how we say that we are all great but you can see the maximum number of people who are all being um, part of the higher education system in the whole world hunting for the best education abroad they all get educated there but what happens is they are not able to get a job on that education system where they are fit to or the core education system where they got trained this is in this context we should look at whether the national education policy the vedic wisdom the indian knowledge system all that is beneficial for not for the people who are in the international scenario in the indian scenario and navigating the life mental patterns i wrote another book called the mind matters i'm sure we have got great things to contribute to the world in terms of vedic wisdom more so in learning what we want to contribute to our own education system so that we become fit for not like the world is very very small today loga samasta sugino bhavantu we call but immediately we say our people and your people that outlook has to change the culture has to change the language has to change we are able to communicate in the way we want it most of the time the 1500 people who called me for last 3 months have seen after 12th class they don't know how to write a message they write english scriptured malayalam that is how we write understand they all come from english medium education and with a lot of best teachers probably what they produce so we need to look at the indian heritage i can talk on what science contribution we had what maths we had what physics we have what chemistry we had uh, that is the scientific heritage part of it i am sure here the topic is very specific on the vedic wisdom in the vedic wisdom we must say that i i wanted to tell that the objective and scope i keep talking when somebody wanted to write a phd thesis you can exactly follow what bhagavad gita in which pattern it is being written the first part is the literature survey chapter number 1 if you look at uh, bhagavad gita the first chapter itself is the real reason and that is arjuna vishada yoga and the second chapter is the uh, real essence of bhagavad gita the synopsis the objective and scope which is defined in the sankhya yoga and then the last part becomes the conclusion the 18th chapter so the bhagavad gita is one of the textbook which talks about how logically how systematically documentation should happen how discussion should happen higher education in most of the world is turning to be a collaborative learning a research oriented learning a dialogue ways of learning a structure in which the student and the teacher can have a dialogue that is what is upanishads upanishad is sit beside and then start the mentorship programs which now people are being implemented 
I was part of the WWS, Walk With a Scholar program in Kerala. Probably I am the only one who has covered the whole Kerala. I drove myself nearly 4000 kilometers in Kerala. Kerala is only 400 kilometers. So imagine how zigzag I must have driven. Thiruvananthapuram to Kasargod, I made clusters of teachers and then started talking about what is the mentoring program. If you look at our Upanishad is exactly like a mentoring program. The government changed, WWS stopped. And the teachers program for the WWS program in Kerala was nav Mentors Navigation Workshop, MNW. If you look at it, you can see series of lectures from Kasargod to uh, Thirvan Dabram, which I conducted for making teachers and mentors. Our Rishis, our Sanyasins, our Acharyas were mentors. And they had a bunch of students who were under him. They made them internationally fit. Probably that is why we had lot of scriptures. Plenty of them. And if you look at each one of them, have been very systematically described under total theory, under the Rigveda, the marketing management principles in Samaveda, the practical guide under the uh, Yajurveda and the Brahmanas which are how um, like a laboratory what is to be done can be seen like a Brahmanas in which each of the Upanishads had Rigvedya Brahmana, Samavedya Brahmana, Adarvedya Brahmana, Aranyakas, the Rigveda Aranyaka like Aitre Aranyakam etc etc and Upanishads plenty of them under each of the headings. So these are all the Vedic wisdom which we had. Apart from that, practically useful for the physical, emotional, intellectual, social, literature development like Upavedas, like Arthashastra, Economics, Dhanur Veda, the fighting war. Last philosophy day, I was there in North Bengal University on a philosophy day as a speaker where I explained the philosophy of war. The Stavatya Veda which is the architectural knowledge which we had. The Gandharva Veda. If you look at what is that which we don't have a textbook. But what is practically we have today is some versions of it at here and there. We need to look at it, relook at it. Probably we don't have to stress too much on the Mahapuranas and Upapuranas, Darshanas. Darshanas, yes, definitely we should have because that's philosophy. And in which we have got Nyaya Shastra, the Sankhya Shastra, the logic and um, uh, all, all these have to be studied thoroughly for in the context of today and maybe Idihasa Purana is to tell you how it has to be described, what is the method in which it can be popularized. This is what I wanted to tell you in the, I, I think I, I spoke almost half an hour or more, that's good enough and if somebody has some questions and if you got Chehra is good, face is good, you could open your camera. The face is bad, probably you don't have to open the camera, you can be under the curtain. When I believe when somebody comes to a, a Google Meet or a discussion like this, I am entering in your house because on your mobile or on your laptop I am coming. And what are you doing is shutting the door and saying, don't come to me. Right. If I also close my camera and then speak, how vulgar it will be. Or maybe if you want to just listen to this, you can look at Dr. TPS. My name is D-R-T-P-S. Teachers, parents, students. This is the only three categories whom I deal with. So you can look at it. There may be around 6,000 uh, uh, videos on which probably hundreds of them are on Indian heritage, Indian wisdom, Indian traditional knowledge, Bhagavad Gita. Three times I taught Bhagavad Gita. You can see how practically and how today's world, what wisdom can be taken from each sloka. That is what I have done. So I will stop here and then expect people to have some reactions or comments or maybe questions, whatever you have. I am sure I have, I have just brushed upon some of the aspects but not gone into the deep because one hour is not good enough for such a process. But if questions are there, if anybody is interested, can always get back to me. My telephone number is 950 or go to internet, Dr. TPS, you just type 
my number will be available all my videos have got my number below that contact me get back to me anytime you can have a gmail directly with me and then we can have dialogue discussions and uh, arguments or maybe counters anything can be there i love to have lot of tarkashastra the criticisms and tarkam has to be there then it becomes more richer it makes me to think much in in a different style so this is what i want to contribute and stop here probably wait for your responses thank you thank you so much i must thank um, the college for hosting me namaste sir namaste thank you sir yeah. delhi yeah so in the mep has talked a lot about i india knowledge system in the document yeah Uh, they have uh, started national curriculum framework for teachers and school education yeah so all those mechanism like all those guided mechanism and directions really help the youngsters to get inclined towards the indian knowledge system or like such kind of uh, direct debate discussions should be promoted more so that we can strengthen the psyche system see um, I, I, i know what happens in the engineering college i was part of the executive director of an engineering college i was the management professor in one of the engineering colleges very recently i was there as part of the kl university as a professor uh, because of the aict chairman had lot of interest on indian knowledge system he made a circular that every engineering college should have and there is a syllabus given i also taught that to the teachers training programs and fdps ultimately what happens in india is everything ends up in examination hall i keep saying not even a single engineering college in this country is really giving a professional degree because none of the engineering college teachers are practically professionals they must have done a btech they must have done an mtech they must have done a phd but an electrical professor cannot even open a switchboard in his own house that practically important we are i remember going to nit hamirpur in an automobile and mechanical engineering department as a tech first inauguration program i was invited there i asked anybody has got a motor bike get on to the stage i called the teachers and engineers and asked them to open it up and if you close it back i will give you 10000 rupees from my pocket there were 10 people who came opened up the whole motor bike but we had to call somebody from the street who is a iit dropout who could make it well that is the professional knowledge which we have fortunately medical colleges are much better because the professors in the medical colleges are practicing doctors understood i am sure value system value education i was also asked to give a lecture as per the circular given i don't think and most of the value system education what should not be done is what is being taught there value education is always don't do this don't do this don't do this unfortunately or fortunately i also have an llb our law is always to say that what should not be done what should be done cannot be said once you do a mistake commit a mistake the judge will tell you should not have done it but we don't have system in which says what is to be done correct so this is how we teach so it's all academic process it's all mockerizing people i keep saying most of the education institutions are itself like a soft jail imagine you give a new education policy says people can go free you can back and study after some time if that is really implemented india will become totally chaos you can imagine the large number of 25 percentage of youth who are all in colleges and the schools in the higher education institutions and all the teachers becoming warden in the schools and classrooms government also knows i was also part of the government system government also knows you study this it is not going to get any job in that business but why are you still opening up all the colleges so that the children will be under arrest at least 4 years 5 years if that youth is on the street i am sure a revolution will happen understood we have got a beautiful family system in which parents are responsible for putting them in the education system if the day parents decide that i am not going to educate my children like in america and all after 12th class the parents will give a cent of 
to the children they are thrown out of the house to get back to their house they need permission i was in us 6 months 6 months two terms i attended many such programs of my own students so i will tell you that is an entirely different system which we cannot implement in india so education has become just a mockery in most of the cases it is just spending time and we are safeguarding the society with not lot of chaotic problem that is what i believe yes maybe as i said two percentage of the people get knowledge they get into education they get into degree they get into contributing you can imagine what we have a btech project if genuinely a professor is signing that this is a genuine invention india would have been a great country with so much of inventions happening every day right correct or not we don't have anything why because we know everybody is fooling i remember um here as a mba the last we have a viva voc the project report was given i asked the student what is the title of the project report the student doesn't know because it is the printer who makes that the first page is open i have seen the boy who is submitting the report in which the first page talks about a genuine work by her that means even that is not corrected and as a viva voc expert i should ask some question that happened to be on 25th january i asked what is tomorrow special for india not in english in telugu in their own mother tongue re painti visheshalu me uh, india india what is that special for india tomorrow immediately the student is asking what are the options which i have then i said swatantra dinama ganatantra dinama is it swatantra dinam or ganatantra dinam and the student says it is swatantra dinam and that student also is an mba you understood so this is how our education system is unfortunately this is our education system is. i am not saying that there are no brilliant children there are bright brilliant children a uh, great things happening but you must understand that is only very very little percentage got it do you think this the multi nt and multi sd system no it is not going to get implemented because our family system is much stronger we don't allow our children to drop out <laughs> very simple <laughs> the system cannot work without the parents i'll tell you all the government schools in india are for teachers because they get salary even if they don't teach all the private schools are for parents because they know you submit to them they will take care we don't have schools for children we don't have freedom for children that is a lucky situation lucky situation therefore i don't think nothing in new education policy is going to get implemented 100% at least in the lower education it is not going to happen probably in the college jet and pg uh, m phil will stop because anything stopping is the first requirement right i also happen to be an m phil but i'm sure nobody wants to do an m phil right so such things will get stopped but see um, if you listen to 1969 i think 1969 or 59 yes radha krishnan's lecture in the kerala university a beautiful lecture on indian education and exactly that is i remember in cms college kottayam i was asked to give a lecture on new education policy at the end somebody said wonderful lecture dr tps recently what happened in india is being told by dr tps and i said i never touched upon new education policy i was only talking about what sarvepalli radhakrishnan spoke in kerala long long back that is the knowledge which we have so i don't think i don't think new education policy is getting going to get implemented um, thank you sir yeah. uh, is there any other questions is there anyone okay is there anyone i think uh, okay i i hope Uh, anyone else don't have any questions i am seeing sharji shobha jasmin praveen pankaj 
Anybody else? For get back to me, my number is available. You can always get back to me. Sir, actually, there is a question in the chat box. Yeah, please read that for me. Uh, it's, it's from SK Vishwa. And, yeah. Uh, his question is, uh, sir, how, how is it possible to incorporate uh, such te teaching in today's education system? Uh, such a teaching means what is in the Indian Vedic system. Probably there are a lot of people like uh, now what I am talking about the Grandma Child Care Shiksha Gurugulam. It's like uh, uh, learning from your um, neighborhood. We don't have to learn. See, I keep asking, where is London Bridge? We have got in our nursery, London Bridge is falling down. Anybody here can answer me? Where is London Bridge? We are all, all teaching. Luckily, I have now studied in my childhood the LKG, UKG, no kilograms were there, only directly on grade 1. But when my children were studying, I had a logic question, where is this London Bridge? Where is this London Bridge? Because the poet, I am also a poet, I write a lot of poems in English. What is seeing around is what I write. London Bridge is falling down, that is what is written. So if it was falling down 200 years back, the poet wrote about London Bridge cannot be there in London today. So you look at London Bridge, Dr. TPS. So I made a small video on that and then kept long back. If you go to the LKG teachers, none of them know this. This is what our education system is. Somebody sang something long back. We are repeating it without even thinking about it. This is what is happening. So I don't think our education system teachers don't think. That is why I said, when I said Brahma Saraswati, Brahma is the God of research. Question should come. The question should come. Now today you see, we have got 22 plus another 10. No questions. We have been trained not to ask questions. Understood? I stopped after 40 minutes thinking there will be a lot of questions. Why did I speak for long? Because I am seeing no other people are raising hands for questions. This is what our problem is because we have been trained not to speak. The LKG teacher keeps on telling, keep quiet, keep quiet, keep quiet. And she is shouting. So the conflict and contradiction is what we are seeing. The teacher is shouting and asking children to keep quiet. This is our education system. I don't think it's going to happen and no change will happen. This is how it will run. We need a change only by informal education. That is why I want entrepreneurs, people without a job, they wanted to do something to the society, join together, 10 of them come back to me. I will serve them at least a few days to teach them how age 3 to grade 3 you can have a different education system. This is what I am doing and I travel across India different places, make some small group of people, talk to them, give them the book free, give them one week of education free make them as entrepreneurs, allow them to start their own schools. This is what I am doing. So people should come forward individually to make it happen. Otherwise, we will say we have got a CBSE. See, the word itself is CBSE, Central Board of Secondary Education. Secondary education starts in ninth class. But we keep writing nursery LKG is also um, CBSE. Are we not fooling the, con the country? Are we not fooling the parents? So unless parents, teachers and students, my name is the service TPS, teachers, parents, students, all the three put together, start thinking very seriously. Maybe informal education, volunteers, NGOs need to come out. Business people who wanted to make things happen in their own village, if they come out, probably things will change. That is what need to happen. That's my hope and that is my wish. It's not a question. Uh, out of curiosity, I am asking, what motivated you being a space scientist and into science? What motivated you to all those real, uh, realistic aspects of education, society and uh, uh, knowledge system? You, li you listen to my TEDx lecture, Dr. TPS TEDx. I was thrown out of in a school which was bright school for brilliant children. 10,000 of them wrote examination and as one of the uh, one out of 27 selected in the nearby Taluk 
from different villages people wrote it's like a district special school with highly meritorious teachers put into that place selected by the government it was a government run school under a great name tagur vidyaniketan that's in kannur my district where i was a student in 7th class i was in a my own management my own family school in a village from there i went to that school i got a rank which i never shared to anybody and that was the last rank no competition for me because i was 27th rank and i was thrown out of the school being the worst student i could study only one year there i was graded as the worst student every teacher used to make fun of me and mockerize me and i was called in the same school after 20 years to distribute prizes for the best students understood so i believe our teachers need a thorough uh, cutting to know that how teaching has to happen so though i became a scientist after retirement under uh, 20 years i took my volunteer retirement i decided that i am going to invest the rest of my time for social service as part of it you know the government system at until the age of 50 you cannot demand volunteer retirement if you ask for volunteer dependent government will tell you we will not give you resign and go many people resigned and went like that i made my case because i am also llb i know the rules i went to calicut university as a director i went to cabinet secretariat i was with ro rnw as a deputy director i would have continued there i was i would have been working with modi today i left all that and what i did was went back to a small village in kerala picked up eighth grade children because eighth grade is what made me bad eighth grade children 45 girls and 45 boys from a small village you can see the program i c o n icon icon dr tps you will see me changing the normal village students to an international standard just by one 13 months of being with them only on holidays so i started my education experiment from that my last one week i was there in goa staying in a school five days teaching the maths physics chemistry biology everything making them fit for writing 10th class exam so i did lot of experiments on education i started contributing to education started writing books and i that is how i am living and that is how i am going to live the next 30 years also sha.in 9502038875 that's my number probably if you are interested you could get back to me on contact if i am of some use to you i'll be the happiest to person thank you so much thank you sir um, i then i would like to thank dr pp sheshkumar mentor space scientist educationist spiritual director and student of indian scientist scientific heritage chairman of shiksha for his valuable insightful as well as interactive section he mentioned the vedas bhagavad gita and assume that we are living in kaliyuga and i think we will get a detailed idea about the vedas and what is happening in higher education so thank you sir from the bottom of our heart thank you next i would like to express my sincere gratitude towards dr sindo jacob coordinator of saint chavra center for teaching excellence and educational innovation and dr lipson kb ipc coordinator for arranging the valuable fdp on this topic thank you sir last and but not least i would like to thank all my colleagues no teaching staff and participants from other institution for this active participation and also thank all the hands behind the journey of fdp conducted by saint chavra center and their team and their tireless effort Once again, thank you all. Thank you so much. Thank you, Shruti ma'am. And uh, before leaving, I want everyone to fill the feedback link, which is posted in the uh, text box. Uh, in the chat box, there is a link posted. Uh, I want everyone to fill it. Uh, it's the feedback form. And uh, uh, now we are ending the session. On behalf of Saint Chavra Center for Teaching Excellence and Education Innovation, I extend our deepest gratitude. to dr tp shashi kumar for gracing us with his presence and sharing his knowledge
big thank you to all the participants uh, for your active involvement and uh, attention throughout the session. We hope that the insights gained today will inspire uh, you to integrate the richness of our ancient wisdom into modern educational practices. Wishing everyone a fruitful and reflective day ahead. Sorry, future ahead. And uh, thank you once again. I think. I once again request all of you to fill the feedback link which is posted in the chat box. Thank you. Thank you so much. We'll meet you soon. Thank you. We wish to meet you all soon in the another session of another activity. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you, you so all. Much. Thank you.